Let's talk about another amazing woman from the scientific revolution, Emilie du Châtelet. She is a French mathematician, physicist, and author who is best known for her work of translating Isaac Newton's Principia Mathematica from Latin into French. But she did way more than that. Her dad was the principal secretary to King Louis XIV of France, so she grew up in a lot of wealth and prominence, and because of that, her dad desired to give her a very strong education. A true polymath, by the age of 12, she was fluent in five languages, French, Latin, Italian, German, and Greek. She got married and had three kids and stayed at home caring for her children for a while, but then entered back into society when she was 32 years old. Not only did she translate Newton's Principia, she also wrote an entire commentary on it and then also wrote herself her own physics textbook. She also had affairs, multiple. The most famous one is with Voltaire. Yes, that Voltaire. They spent an incredible amount of time together. He lived at one of her homes with her. And this was not only a romantic affair, but also an intellectual affair. And they definitely collaborated a lot together. Voltaire, in a letter to King Frederick II of Prussia, said that Châtelet was, quote, a great man whose only fault was being born a woman. Sadly, she ultimately died due to complications from childbirth. That makes me very sad because she was only 43, and I wonder what else she could have accomplished in her lifetime. And the debate about women continues again. In Europe, in the 1600s and 1700s, to what extent do women deserve the right to getting an education? To what extent is that following in Enlightenment philosophies? Great philosopher Mary Wollstonecraft would say that women only appear inferior to men because they lack equal access to education. Meanwhile, other Enlightenment philosophers like Rousseau say that women only deserve to be in the home. 